my tutorial for a couple of beginner-friendly Valentine's Day tumblers. To start, I'll be using a 16 ounce junior tumbler from the Steel Magnolia and marking the bottom of my tumbler so I know where to tape it off. I use some tweezers that I use for weeding to prop up my marker. weeks I've noticed some subscriber comments where they have either just started tumbler making or they're completely brand new to the craft so I decided to make a tutorial that is more on the beginner friendly side fair warning to all my seasoned makers I'll be taking things slow for this tutorial so our new friends can follow along just a little bit easier prep or not to prep that is the question and I get that question a lot and I just gotta say I prep my tumblers you don't have to but what I do is I just take a 60 or 80 grit sanding block and I just scuff up my surface just to take away that shine off of the tumbler through my art classes as a kid and then as an art degree major and then as a graphic designer it's it's been about 25 years of people in you know putting into my skull that I need to prep my surfaces so it's a habit of mine. If you don't want to, you don't have to. If you guys have been on my channel for any amount of time, you know I am a do what you want type of girl. So if you don't want to prop your tumblers, you don't have to, but I do. For our spray paint, I'll be showing you two ways you can do this. A solid color for an easier option and a two color option if you're feeling a little spicy. Okay, if you'd like to be a little bit more adventurous. If you spray paint outside like me, try and spray several inches away from your tumbler and spray with the wind. As the wind is blowing all over the place, do your best to try to get your stream of paint into the wind and the wind is just kind of blowing it on the tumbler. That's how I get that nice gradient. It, 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 it takes, it, it's definitely a learning curve. It's completely different from when I used to spray paint in my garage. Oh my word. My husband kicked me out of the garage with my beautiful spray tent. I miss, I miss it. Lord, I miss my spray tent in my garage. Let your paint dry, now we're ready for our glitter. For PPE, I use nitro gloves and a half face respirator. If you want more protection, they also come with a full face option. I'll be adhering my glitter with the epoxy method and have about five milliliters of part A and part B of medium viscosity artist resin from Counterculture DIY in two medicine cups. I'll have a total of 10 milliliters of epoxy in my cup, but I won't be using all of it. It's just easier for, easier for me to mix that much in the cup. I'll have about five milliliters left over in the cup after I apply the epoxy to both tumblers. In 
sexuality when glittering the tumbler, you can use any adhesive you like. I just love the epoxy method and use just a teeny amount on the tumblers and apply my glitters that way. But you can use Mod Podge or any other adhesive that you're comfortable with using. When I was all done glittering, I went ahead and pulled my tape. I didn't use a lot of epoxy, so I didn't have to worry about it running. Let this glitter layer cure, then we'll be ready for the next step. My tumblers are all cured, and now I'm ready to re-tape off the bottom of my tumblers. People ask me why I tape off the bottom of my tumblers, and I do that just so it's easier for them to not break or crack when they're dropped. You get a lot of customers that can be, well, I mean, they're just normal human beings and they drop their tumblers. And if their tumbler is fully coated in epoxy, you can crack the finish and break the seal. So I started leaving the bottom of my tumbler stainless. And at first I didn't like the look of them, but it's grown on me over the years and it keeps your cups healthier. I want to say healthier longer. I can't think of another word for it. Keeps them protected longer keeps them nicer, longer, whatever you wanna say. It just keeps your cups there longer. And these cups are expensive and you wanna keep them a long time, okay? Long time. After my glitter was cured, I sealed my glitter with Krylon Triple Thick. I did that off camera, but I just sprayed a light coating over my glitter. I used to not do this when I used only one glitter color, but I found my tumbler takes less epoxy to coat over my glitter when I seal the glitter first. Now we're ready for our first coat of epoxy. This will be a last call. Twenty minutes, you're done being alone. bubbles I use a propane torch with a hose attachment and let me tell you this hose attachment has saved my shoulders it is the best purchase that I have ever made I used to pick up that heavy propane torch tank and my neck and my shoulders were screaming by the time I was popping bubbles on about 10 or 15 tumblers at a time this is back when I was making custom orders but let me tell you get yourself a hose attachment it will save your shoulders and if you're getting older like me we need help, y'all. We need help. Okay, fam. Because we're making a simpler design, that does not mean it will be any less pretty or sparkly. So, of course, more glitter. 
I'll be using Bubblicious and Snow Queen, mixing them into the leftover epoxy and adding them to the tumbler. I don't make single color designs as much anymore, but I used to love adding a matching or complementary chunky glitter over top of my single glitter tumbler designs. It will make your glitter not look as flat and give it some depth, but as always, you don't have to, but you should, but you don't have to, but you should, you should do it, just do it, do it, but you don't have to, do it. I let my tumbler spin for about 20 to 25 minutes and then I pulled the tape. In the winter, my craft room is on the cool side, sitting around 65 to 70 degrees, so I wait a tad longer to pull my tape, about the 20 to 25 minutes. In the summer, I can pull my tape after about 10 to 15 minutes. If I have any extra epoxy, epoxy, epoxy? What in the world? Epoxy on the edge. I take some 91% alcohol and a paper towel and I wipe the epoxy edge while the tumbler spins on my turner. My tumblers are nice and cured, and now I'm ready to retape my edge again. I just want to make sure you guys are noticing when I retape my bottom of my tumbler, I make sure there's a super thin line of stainless each time I tape. So if I tape one coat for the next coat, I move the tape down a little bit so there's a thin line of stainless, pull that tape, next coat, reapply the tape, but make sure there's another thin line of stainless. So my tape kind of gradually just goes down that edge until I'm finished. So make sure you don't use a lot of coats or you might use up the whole edge of your tumbler. If you want to do that, that's fine. But for me, I try to keep the edge of my epoxy a little bit up off the tumbler because you want to keep it off that bottom edge because once again, if they drop it, it could still crack. This second coat that we're adding on top of our previous coat is really going to make our tumblers nice and smooth, especially after we added that chunky glitter that you don't have to add, but you should but you don't have to. Do it. I 
I let the tumbler spin for about 20 to 25 minutes and then I went ahead and pulled the tape. Now that our tumbler is cured, I'll be cleaning the rim with my X-Acto knife, then sanding the rim with an 80 grit sanding block until I get a super thin line of stainless showing. I do this to give the last coat of epoxy something to seal onto. If I feel any bumps on my tumbler, I'll lightly sand them as well, then clean off the epoxy dust with some alcohol. Don't forget to wear a mask if you dry sand like I'm doing here. If you have to sand your tumbler all over to get rid of bumps, you'll need to add another coat of epoxy before adding your decals. If you sand and put the decal on top of the sanded tumbler, you'll be able to see that dull glitter underneath the decal. This also applies to water slides as well. Don't ask me how I know, just know that I know. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> we will also be vinyl cutter free this week, woohoo! And using some more peachy decals. She has some super cute ones for Valentine's Day. Be sure to check them out and use the discount code in the description box to save some coins. When you're done, you'll be ready to apply your final coat of epoxy.
after about 25 minutes of spinning, I'm now ready to pull up my tape and I'll be cleaning my epoxy edge with 91% alcohol and a paper towel. Sometimes my edge is perfect on its own, but this time it was a tad wonky. So I'm cleaning it up a tad to make my edge nice and straight. Alcohol wipes work as well. And before you ask, I used to use baby wipes, but that alcohol really makes my edge nice and crisp, but you can use whatever you like. Let cure and you'll be all done. This technique or method can be used for any glitter color and decal of choice. It doesn't have to be for Valentine's Day. If you'd like to see more beginner friendly tutorials, let me know in the comments below. That's it guys. <laughs> thank you so much for watching my tutorial. A huge thank you to all of my mentorship and channel members. Your support is literally everything. Have fun making your Valentine's Day tumblers or tumblers in general, and I will see you again next time.